I uh, thank the senator from Minnesota Thanks for her Washington. leadership on this issue and for her uh, great service on the Senate Judiciary Committee. I know as a former prosecutor, she's provided a great deal of leadership on many, many issues, but uh, having her voice on the Senate Judiciary Committee has been very, very important for our country. And I come here to stand with my colleagues uh, who are here, the women of the Senate, to say that we are standing up for women across America. We want the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, and today we want to tell victims of domestic violence that they are not alone. We have to make sure that we are giving the tools to local governments, to law enforcement, the things that they need to protect the victims of domestic violence. Today we're here with a clear message to the victims of domestic violence, and that is that we will stand with you, and that we haven't forgotten, and we're not going to let this bill be bogged down in political fighting, but we are going to make sure that we continue to move ahead. We already have the support of 61 senators, 47 state attorney generals, and countless law enforcement individuals who are working across the nation to make sure that these victims have an advocate. But we know that there is still opposition that remains, and so I want to make sure that we address those concerns today. For those who are opposed to the bill, I would ask you to look at my state, <clears throat> Washington, and the threat of domestic violence. In Washington state, law enforcement received 30,000 domestic violence calls uh, a year on average. And in any given day in 2011, domestic violence programs served 1,884 people in Washington state. That's why the Violence Against Women Act is so important. In Washington, it really does save lives. People like Carissa, one of my constituents who was in an abusive relationship, she was allowed to flee with her then three-year-old daughter in 1998. She joined me in Seattle recently to highlight the fact that the programs, a shelter, and the help in starting a new life helped her escape that life of abuse. I want to quote Carissa when she said, I am standing here alive today because VAWA works. Looking into Carissa's eyes, you know that this is not about statistics and it's not about politics. It's about providing a lifeline to women who want to have a different life. The act also helps crack down on violence against mail order brides. It's a story that we all know too well in the Pacific Northwest. Anastasia King and Susanna Blackwell were mail order brides who came to Washington State to start a new life with men they believed loved them. Their lives were brutally cut short when their husbands murdered them. This happened after they had been subject to repeated domestic abuse. And that's why in 2005, I sponsored the International Marriage Broker Regulation Act, which became part of the Violence Against Women Act. It empowered foreign-born fiancés to learn if their spouse had a history of violent crime. And it now has become part of the reauthorization that is this bill today. It includes enhancements that require marriage broker agencies to provide foreign fiancés with a record of any domestic violence that their potential spouse might have engaged in. That way, we can stop the abuse before it begins. Opponents who say that the Violence Against Women Act would create immigration fraud and give funds to those who don't need it should consider the story of Anastasia King and Susanna Blockwell. Anastasia and Susanna lives could have been saved had these provisions and protections been in place. We should, deny, we should not deny immigrant women or trafficking victims resources that they need to prevent abuse nor we, should we create barriers for them to get the safety they need. That's why we need to pass the Violence Against Women Act. And we also need to make it clear that Native American women will receive protection. Deborah Parker of the Tulalip Tribe came to the Capitol this week to explain why this is so important. Deborah was a tireless champion for the people and for the victims of domestic abuse, and she was here to tell her brave story. She spoke eloquently as why women need to make sure that their perpetrators will be charged. Consider that 39% of American Indian women will endure domestic violence in their lifetime. Compare that with figures 
that estimate that 24% of all women in the United States will experience domestic violence in their lifetimes. So we need a Violence Against Women Act that will crack down on the domestic violence in tribal communities. And this bill gives the tools so that we can make sure that we go after those offenders. Some have warned that this will trample on the rights of individuals to have due process and full protection. That isn't the case. So what we are doing here is making sure that there will be an investigation on reservations of the suspected abuse. So I think it is time that we address this epidemic that's happening in Indian country before it escalates more. And that's why we need to make sure that every woman in America has the rights under the Violence Against Women Act to be protected. We have a long way to go to root out domestic abuse and violence, but without these tools, like VAWA, we are not going to achieve our goals. So it is time that we pass this legislation for people like Deborah, for people like Carissa, and to remember the lives of people like Susanna and Anastasia King. I thank the President. I yield the floor.